You've heard the experts say it about Jeffrey Dahmer. Gacy dislikes the comparison. What do I think of Jeffrey Dahmer? I don't know the man personally, but I, I'll tell you this. That's a good example as to why insanity doesn't belong in the courtroom. Because if Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't meet the, the requirements for insanity, then I'd hate like hell to run into the guy that does. Do you feel Beyond so? that, uh, I have no comment on Jeffrey Dahmer because I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. In a world where darkness can lurk behind the most ordinary facades, prepare to embark on a bone-chilling journey. Today, we delve into the twisted and disturbing story of John Wayne Gacy. Greetings, fellow enthusiasts of true crime and mysteries. Today, we embark on a journey into the abyss of human darkness, delving deep into the haunting story of John Wayne Gacy. This tale is not for the faint of heart, as it unravels the chilling double life of a man who concealed unspeakable horrors behind a carefully constructed mask of normalcy. Brace yourselves, because this narrative will take you on a roller coaster ride through twisted secrets, gruesome murders, and a courtroom drama that captured the nation's attention. John Wayne Gacy's story is one that continues to captivate and disturb us as it forces us to confront the terrifying notion that evil can lurk behind the most unassuming faces. As we explore every eerie detail of this case, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. By doing so, you'll stay updated with our riveting content, all centered around the darkest corners of human behavior. So. Who was John Wayne Gacy, and how did he manage to live this dual existence? How did he lure unsuspecting victims into his web of terror? What was the shocking evidence that led to his arrest and the high-profile trial that would follow? What was life like for him on death row as the nation awaited his fate? Prepare yourselves, for this journey into the abyss will test your understanding of the human psyche. It will make you question the boundaries of good and evil and it will leave an indelible mark on your consciousness. But above all, it will remind us that the most terrifying monsters can often wear the most benign masks. Before we dive headfirst into this disturbing narrative, remember to hit that like button if you're ready for this chilling exploration. Share this video with your friends who share your passion for true crime, and let's embark on this unsettling journey together. Now, without further ado, let us begin to unmask the evil that is John Wayne Gacy. Early Life and Background To truly understand the chilling tale of John Wayne Gacy, we must first explore the intricate web of his early life and background, which played a pivotal role in shaping the monster he would become. John Wayne Gacy was born in Chicago in 1942 into what appeared to be a typical American family. On the surface, his upbringing seemed unremarkable, yet beneath this veneer of normalcy, dark shadows loomed. Gacy's early life was mirrored by a strained relationship with his father, John Stanley Gacy, who was an abusive alcoholic. This turbulent father-son dynamic left scars on young John's psyche, creating a fractured sense of self and instilling deep-seated insecurities. As a child, Gacy struggled with various health issues, including a heart condition, which made him the target of bullying at school. This, coupled with his tumultuous home life, left him feeling isolated and alienated from his peers. To me, it's almost like John Wayne Gacy was a multiple personality. Uh, the successful contractor, the friendly neighbor, uh, the community organizer. These formative years set the stage for his descent into darkness. To mask his insecurities, Gacy developed a charming and affable exterior, which he would later use to deceive those around him. He became a talented salesman, known for his charisma and ability to connect with people, a skill that would prove pivotal in his heinous double life. However, beneath this facade lurked early signs of his sinister inclinations. At a young age, he developed a fascination with death and exhibited troubling behavior such as torturing animals, a common trait among serial killers. This fascination with death would evolve into something far more sinister as he grew older. Gacy's early life was a complex tapestry of pain, trauma, and inner turmoil, which would ultimately push him down a dark and sinister path. It's in these formative years that we begin to see the seeds of a monster being sown, 
setting the stage for the horrors that would unfold in the years to come. Double Life Unveiled As we journey further into the disturbing story of John Wayne Gacy, we arrive at a pivotal moment, the unveiling of his chilling double life. It's a narrative that reveals how an outwardly ordinary man managed to conceal a sinister alter ego for years, all while maintaining a facade of respectability. In the 1970s, Gacy appeared to be a model citizen, a successful businessman, and a pillar of his community. Throughout the decade, from 1972 to 1978, he was known for his involvement in local politics, fundraising events, and his role as a clown performer at children's parties, under the guise of Pogo the Clown. But behind this mask of normalcy, a darkness loomed that would shock the world. Gacy's transformation into a serial killer began with a series of disappearances in the Chicago area, particularly between 1972 and 1978. Young boys and young men seemed to vanish without a trace, leaving their families desperate for answers. The community was in turmoil, and no one suspected the seemingly charming and affable John Wayne Gacy. One of the most terrifying aspects of Gacy's double life was his ability to maintain a convincing facade. He was not just a killer, he was a master manipulator. But still, there is no association. None of them never worked for me. None of them, they never went to any places that I ever hung around because I didn't hang, hang around that many places unless you were involved in politics or, or you, if you were involved in clowning, then I might've ran into you, but there's no way I could've run into any of them. He knew how to gain the trust of his victims, often luring them with the promise of employment or offering them money in exchange for odd jobs. It was this charismatic and friendly exterior that allowed him to continue his gruesome spree undetected. Behind closed doors, Gacy's suburban home harbored a horrifying secret. Unbeknownst to his family, friends, and neighbors, a hidden crawl space beneath his house served as a burial ground for his victims. What do I think of Jeffrey Dahmer? I don't know the man personally, but I, I'll tell you this, that's a good example as to why insanity does belong in the courtroom. Because if Jeffrey Dahmer doesn't meet the, the requirements for insanity, then I'd hate like hell to run into the guy that does. Do you feel Beyond so? that, uh, I have no comment on Jeffrey Dahmer because I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. The shocking discoveries made under that very floor would unravel the facade he had carefully constructed. The revelation of Gacy's double life sent shockwaves through the community as the true extent of his evil deeds became apparent. The sheer audacity of his crimes, committed right under the noses of those who knew him, left people baffled and horrified. This is where the story takes a truly chilling turn, and we invite you to stay with us as we uncover the shocking truths behind John Wayne Gacy's facade of normalcy. If you are intrigued by this dark exploration, please show your support by liking this video and sharing it with others who share your fascination with the mysteries of human nature. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single spine-tingling episode of our series on John Wayne Gacy. The Gruesome Killings Now, as we plunge deeper into the chilling story of John Wayne Gacy, we must confront the darkest chapter of his gruesome legacy, the horrifying killings that shook a community and sent shockwaves across the nation. Let's embark on this disturbing descent into madness. John Wayne Gacy's victims were young boys and young men, individuals who trusted him or were lured by his promises of employment or money. Between 1972 and 1978, what followed was a nightmare beyond imagination. Gacy's modus operandi was both sinister and calculated. He would often approach his victims, many of whom were vulnerable and seeking employment, with offers of work or financial incentives. They innocently followed him, not realizing they were stepping into a deadly trap. Once under his control, Gacy would overpower his victims, often using handcuffs or ropes. He subjected them to unspeakable acts of violence, torture, and abuse. The cruelty he inflicted upon these innocent souls is beyond comprehension. What sets Gacy apart from other serial killers is the sheer number of victims and the brutality of his crimes. 
He claimed the lives of at least 33 young men during this period, making him one of the most prolific serial killers in American history. The scope of his evil is mind-boggling. The horror didn't end with the victim's deaths. Gacy's ability to maintain a veneer of normalcy allowed him to continue his reign of terror. He buried many of his victims beneath the crawl space of his own home, a place that should have been safe but became a macabre tomb. The thought of what transpired within those walls is enough to send shivers down one's spine. The gruesome discoveries made by law enforcement under Gacy's house sent shockwaves through the community and left an indelible mark on the collective psyche of a nation. The sheer brutality of the murders and the fact that they occurred right under the noses of unsuspecting neighbors and family members is a testament to the depths of depravity that Gacy had sunk. Gacy's Arrest and Trial as we navigate through the chilling narrative of John Wayne Gacy, we now arrive at a pivotal moment in his gruesome saga, his arrest, and the sensational trial that would grip the nation. The events that unfolded during this period would bring to light the true extent of his malevolence, sending shockwaves throughout the country. By the late 1970s, the disappearance of numerous young men in the Chicago area had raised suspicions, and the law enforcement agencies had begun to close in on Gacy. In December 1978, the pivotal moment arrived when police obtained a search warrant for Gacy's home. What they discovered was beyond horrifying. Beneath the floorboards of Gacy's house, authorities unearthed the remains of his victims. The crawl space had become a grotesque burial ground for these innocent souls, a nightmarish testament to the depths of his depravity. It was a scene that would haunt the investigators and the public for years to come. With overwhelming evidence against him, John Wayne Gacy was arrested and charged with multiple counts of murder. His arrest sent shockwaves through the community as neighbors and acquaintances grappled with the unthinkable that the friendly, clown-performing businessmen they knew was a sadistic killer. Gacy's trial was a media sensation, drawing intense scrutiny from both the public and the press. The courtroom proceedings were marked by his bizarre behavior, including courtroom antics that ranged from bizarre outbursts to seemingly contradictory emotional displays. It was a chilling display of the man behind the mask, as the nation watched in disbelief. The prosecution presented a mountain of evidence, including the testimony of survivors who had narrowly escaped Casey's clutches. The sheer horror of their accounts left a lasting impact on the jury. Monster uh, image, uh, what, what are you referring to by that? Well, the idea that, that, that I'm, I'm uh, a homosexual thrill killer and all that, that garbage. And uh, they painted this image of me that uh, like I, I strolled down the streets and stalked young boys and, and slaughtered them. Hell, if you could see my schedule, my work schedule, you know damn well that I was never out there. Raising doubts of whether he was a reliable source when speaking about his crimes. And the courtroom spectators. Gacy's defense, meanwhile, attempted to paint a picture of mental instability, but it was clear that his charade was unraveling. Ultimately, on March 12, 1980, John Wayne Gacy was found guilty of 33 counts of murder, one for each of his known victims. He was sentenced to death, a verdict that was met with both relief and closure for the families of his victims. Gacy's arrest and trial not only exposed the horrors he had perpetrated, but also raised questions about how such a monster could operate for so long under the radar. It was a moment that forced society to reevaluate its assumptions about those it deemed trustworthy. Life on Death Row Thank you for providing John Wayne Gacy's dates of birth and death. Here's the revised text with those dates incorporated. Life on Death Row John Wayne Gacy, March 17, 1942 May 10, 1994 Spent his time on death row, marked by a series of chilling confessions. He began to reveal the horrifying details of his crimes shedding light on the sheer brutality and coldness of his actions. These confessions not only haunted the families of his victims, but also offered some form of closure to those who had been searching for answers. The condemned killer's behavior behind bars was nothing short of bizarre. He maintained his charismatic facade, even forming friendships with some of his fellow inmates and prison staff. Gacy's ability to switch between the charming exterior 
and the malevolent monster within showcased his incredible manipulation skills. Incarcerated in the notorious Menard Correctional Center in Illinois, Gacy continued to capture the attention of the public and the media. His every move was scrutinized, and his impending execution on May 10, 1994, became a subject of morbid fascination. As we bring this bone-chilling journey to a close, we're left with a haunting reminder that evil can lurk in the most unexpected places. John Wayne Gacy's story is a testament to the twisted depths of the human psyche, a chilling narrative that forces us to confront the darkness that can hide behind a charming smile. It's a story that will continue to captivate and disturb us, serving as a stark cautionary tale. In the end, Gacy's life and crime serve as a grim reminder that the world is not always as it seems. As we bid farewell to this unsettling exploration, let us remember to stay vigilant, to trust our instincts, and to cherish the bonds of community that protect us from those who wear the mask of normalcy while concealing unspeakable horrors. If this journey has left you as fascinated and disturbed as it has left us, please show your support by liking this video and sharing it with those who share your passion for unraveling the mysteries of human nature. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for we will continue to delve into the enigmatic and chilling world of true crime. Thank you for joining us on this unsettling journey. And remember, stay curious, stay safe, and never stop exploring the depths of human behavior. Until next time.